Congressman Pat Tiberi, chairman of the Subcommittee on Select Revenue Measures, held a hearing as to how Congress should evaluate tax extenders. Unfortunately, testifying on behalf of the Government Accountability Office, James White repeated the suggestion that Congress consider, and I emphasize consider, offering grants to community development entities in lieu of new market tax credits. We also looked at whether the new markets tax credit succeeded in moving resources as intended. The credit did appear to increase investment in low-income communities. However, we also reported that its complexity makes it difficult to complete smaller projects and results in less money flowing through to low-income community businesses than might, than might be possible with alternative designs. We suggested that Congress consider offering grants instead of tax credits, with one option being a side-by-side -side test of the two approaches. Other witnesses expressed support for specific tax provisions and cited their contributions to the economy and their benefits as proof of those provisions merit. For example, Aaron Gornstein, Under Secretary for Housing and Community Development in Massachusetts, testified that the New Market Tax Credit, Build America Bonds, Empowerment Zones, Empowerment Zone Bonds, and the Long Housing Tax Credit have created hundreds of thousands of jobs and housing units throughout the nation. The first New Markets Tax Credit allocations were awarded only nine years ago, yet this well-designed program has achieved excellent outcomes. Forty-five billion dollars invested, 92 million square feet of retail, commercial, and office space developed, over 300,000 jobs created. These investments in each of your congressional districts are restoring abandoned buildings to the tax rolls, revitalizing small business districts, and creating momentum for further development. I wanted to provide a few examples from Massachusetts. Holyoke is a western Massachusetts city, once the world's largest paper manufacturer, but now one of the poorest communities in the state. New markets generated $9 million in debt financing for a full-service health care center in the heart of downtown, a project that created 350 jobs. A few blocks away, a world-class computer technology center, a $168 million project, is under construction with 600 jobs already created. Universities, including Harvard and MIT, are actively supporting this initiative. The New Markets tax credit expired at the end of 2011, but it's not too late to extend it. Because of its importance, I ask the committee in Congress to take three actions. First, make the program permanent. Second, extend the program for five more years and an annual allocation level of $5 billion. And we thank Congressman Neal and Congressman Gerlach for their sponsorship of H.R. 2655 in this regard, and three, allow new markets to be used to offset taxes paid under the alternative minimum tax. In addition to witness testimony, several committee members also expressed support for the new market tax credit. Those members include Congressman Thompson and Gerlach, as well as Chairman Tiberi himself. As we learned from the last subcommittee hearing, so many expired provisions that are under consideration today enjoy broad bipartisan support. In fact, many of us are lead sponsors uh, of important job creation provisions, including the New Markets Tax Credit. The temporary nature of provisions should not automatically make it more eligible for termination than some of the provisions in the tax code that are permanent. Many of these provisions were enacted on a temporary basis due to budgetary constraints. That does not automatically de uh, detract from the merit of the provisions themselves. But today we're talking about provisions that have already expired. Businesses, large and small, rely on these provisions when making investment decisions. We have allowed almost 18 months of the 112th Congress to pass without doing our job to move legislation providing uh, extension of these provisions. First of all, thank you uh, both Mr. White and Mr. Gorenstein on your thoughts, further thoughts on this issue of the New, market ta new Markets Tax Credit. Uh, and particularly, Mr. Gorstein, I, I, I share your view on uh, keeping the program as is and, and growing it in terms of the amount of allocation that's available each year over a longer period of time. Uh, I think it does a, a pretty terrific th thing in a lot of communities with these projects. Since 2003, the program's cost to the Treasury has been about five and a quarter billion dollars. In exchange, the Treasury has allocated roughly $29 billion dollars in tax credits that have resulted in what Mr. Gorenstein said is roughly $45 billion in new market investments. So that's a leverage of about 8 to 1. 
In addition, uh, some estimates are that 300,000 jobs were created or retained at a cost of about $17,000 per job. The grant programs are extremely important, but it's the tax credits, low-income housing tax credit, new markets, that are the engine that drive these deals. So the grant programs alone are not enough to move forward on most development projects in most communities. You need a combination, typically. But the biggest resource, the most powerful one, is the tax credit. So I think if we lose the tax credit or it's not extended or there's uncertainty and we're not getting the yields we need, it's going to have a detrimental effect on our, effect on our ability to do more projects in very targeted communities.